Hey friends, it's Rabbi Jenny Solomon at Beth Meyer Synagogue in Raleigh, North Carolina, here with a Mincha moment. This week's Torah portion is Akev. Um, we are moving through the last book of the Torah, Dvarim, Deuteronomy. Um, as Moses tells, retells our story, our Exodus story, our journey through the wilderness and closer and closer to the promised land. The word akev is really serves as kind of a big because, the word because. So Moses is very concerned that when the Israelites get into the promised land, essentially they're going to forget where they came from. They're going to forget that it was because of God's grace and God's strength and God's guidance. And by the way, also Moses's um, leadership, among others, that made it possible for them to live in the land and that um, they're going to forget to be grateful. They're going to forget their moral and ethical compass to help them create um, not only just uh, to settle the land, but to become um, a just, a, a justice centered and righteous centered community. So that's a little bit about the feeling of this week's Torah portion. So amidst all of these, um, amidst all of this concern, Moses attempts to put in place some, um, I would say some strong encouragement and exhortation to the people to engage in certain practices that are gonna help them remember who they are and where they came from. And this is very, uh, I think, relevant to our own spiritual lives even today. I know for myself, um, when I am hurting or when I'm experiencing a kind of lack, uh, I can be very aware um, and feeling my vulnerability, I can be very aware of God's presence in my life, of yearning for that. Um, if I have lost some ability or um, something once hurt, but now it feels good. Um, again, I am very sensitized um, and very awakened to my own gratitude um, because I know that I've, I've missed that thing or missed that capacity and now I have it once again. But when things are really good and we're feeling abundance, and we're getting used to a sense of abundance. Abundant, abundance has actually become habitual in a certain sense. Um, it's just really easy to, to forget. So there's a beautiful line in the Torah portion which lays out the instructions essentially for mindful eating. The line is, V'achalta v'savata uverachta. You will eat, you should eat, and when you and then experience satisfaction and then bless say words of gratitude express your gratitude and the rabbis of the ancient rabbis use this as the template which is why of course we have blessings to say um, before we eat different foods in judaism but we also have a very uh, a lengthier blessing um, after we've eaten after we feel satisfied okay so what I actually wanted to invite us to focus on, and as I shared with you last week, um, the little secret that rabbis typically give the sermon they themselves need to hear, I have the most trouble with the second part of that mindful eating template. Vechalta eat, I got that. Vesavata, feel your satisfaction. That's my issue. Uverachta. I'm pretty good at remembering to be grateful. Not perfect, but pretty good. All right. So visavata, experience satisfaction. So for anybody who practices yoga, um, I like to think about this a little bit about um, the way that one practices um, the shape or embodies the shape of shavasana at the end of a yoga practice, which sometimes you could call corpse pose. Of course, there is tremendous, tremendous depth um, which I won't go into and which I'm not an expert in, but I have a lot to say about uh, the value of a resting pose at the end of a yoga practice. But I know myself um, that especially when I'm practicing on my own, that is the practice, even though it's the most 
pleasurable in some way that I'm quickest to abandon. And so too, when I eat, um, I enjoy the eating part. And then I immediately bless and rush on to the next thing that I'm doing. So I think something very powerful actually gets lost when we forget that core piece. And it's not that it has to take a long time. I'm not sure any of us necessarily have time for whatever the equivalent of a Shavasana would be every single time we eat, although that's a nice idea. But just to take a moment to notice satiety, that I'm full, that my need for nourishment um, has been met and hopefully has been met in a pleasurable way, not always, but often. And I think there are so, so many good things that come when I take, when I do take the time to experience savata, that point of satisfaction. First of all, I am connected, much more connected to the truth of my experience, which is that I've, I've gotten what I need. I, I met my needs. I'm grateful, of course, to all the people um, who made it possible for me to, to meet that need. But I, have, I actually have what I need now to move on um, with the next part of my day or night. But even more, when I don't stop to really notice that and to dwell in that place of savata, even for a moment, is that it's so easy to then get caught up in the next cycle of longing because I never even took the time to notice what filled me up um, in the last go round. So for you, the struggle or the challenge, the spiritual challenge might be a little bit different. Um, you might uh, feel inspired to focus your attention more on berachta, on the blessing part, the gratitude, um, or maybe the achalta. Maybe it's more challenging to even um, sit and eat for whatever reason. But I want to offer as an invitation, and again, this is myself included, to bring a little bit of loving attention to savata, that experience of satisfaction that comes when you have eaten what you want, what you desire, and what you need, and to dwell there, even if just for a moment. All right, peace, shalom.